It takes us to our talk of the tape. The state of this rally, whether it really matters, whether it's broad enough. Let's ask Anastasia Amoroso, iCapital's chief investment strategist, with me here at Post 9. Welcome back. Good to see you, Scott. That's the debate. It all, all roads lead to that. Too narrow or no big deal? Well, it is too narrow once again. And it's the new year, new hopes, but it's the same story, which is, as you know, we've all been calling for the broadening of the rally. And whether it's unprofitable tech, whether it's the equal cap uh, S&P 500, equal weight S&P 500, none of that is delivered. But it boils down to one simple thing, which is we don't know when the Fed is going to cut rates. And there's obviously greater hopes that the Fed may cut in March that's now having to get pushed back. So that's why a lot of those catch-up trades are in the holding pattern. And I don't think you can blame the investors, Scott, for sticking with a playbook that worked. You know, mega cap tech works because they have revenue growth, and obviously that's accelerating. They have now buybacks. They also have dividends. So why fix what's not broken? So the answer to the question we have there on the screen, does bad breath in the market, does it matter? We said it's the same, but does it matter? I don't think it matters as long as the big tech leadership delivers. And obviously, going into last week, you know, we've seen some mixed messages from parts of that complex. But when Meta came out, when Microsoft came out, um, you know, when Amazon delivered, that clearly tells you that this leadership is not frothy. It's not just by accident, but I think it is sustainable. Now, clearly, we would like to see other parts of the market to participate. And by the way, Scott, there's also a point to be made on positioning. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as everybody is maybe uncomfortable with the leadership, and it's being so narrow, guess where people are putting their money? They're putting it in tech. If you look at the fund flows over the last 12 months, all the other sectors have really not gained except for technology. If you look at the call options that are being bought, last week was tremendous volumes uh, in big tech, and that's what retail investors are chasing. So as long as that's where the crowd goes, I think it works. But does, the, does it weaken the foundation of the market? Does it weaken the foundation of the rally if the upper floors are putting more and more weight on themselves. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's sustainable in the long term, right? Because at some point, you know, if the, the, those big heavy hitters carry the whole weight of the market, their valuations will get to levels that raise eyebrows. And you can't point to P ratios adjusted for growth and say that's okay. So I do think at some point that should change. But Scott, to that point, I think it will. You know, we clearly push back the expectations for the March rate cut. But by the way, once we get to March, that's still two PCE reports away. That's still two PCE reports away. And I think when it comes to March, the Fed is not going to be able to sit there and say, well, we're not yet confident. You know, when inflation hits 2.6 percent, uh, as we expect by the end of March, mm -hmm. I think the Fed will have to change its tune. So you make the argument, as I said at the very top, that one of our guests today says now's the time to buy the dip in those catch-up trades, the underperformers. Why is now the time? Because others would argue, you know, if they were going to work, they would have already worked. And maybe you need to wait for that first rate cut before you feel confident enough to buy yeah. those stocks. I, I don't think you wait because, as you know, the markets price in things in advance. And normally, what, normally. Normally, yeah. And, well, I mean, that's what we've been doing for the last three or four months. But I think what's likely to happen in the next couple of months is as we wait for the March meeting, we're going to whipsaw around. We're probably going to chop around and we're going to be just so glued to the PC, PC reports and and the Fed speak and all of that. And that's probably not going to move us all that much because data is strong and the Fed is uncertain. But once we get to March, and if we're right saying that the Fed is not going to be able to deny progress on inflation, they're not going to be able to say we're not yet confident when every measure of inflation you look at is on the path to 2%. I think that's what will catalyze the stocks. Now, I don't think today is the only day that you have the opportunity to buy them. But over the next month and a half, I would be buying in and buy, stepping in and buying those areas of weakness leading into the March FOMC. Do you think it matters if they go in March or if they go in May or, or June, as long as you know that the likelihood appears to be that they are going to cut rates this year? I don't think it matters all that much. I mean, clearly, for some of the catch-up trades we're talking about, I'd rather them go sooner rather than later. But for the economy, I think if they deliver the rate cuts in the first half of the year, I think that's preemptive enough. Scott, we talked about, you know, kind of the piles of debt that are out there. And the reason I'm not concerned about this very moment is because they will likely be refinanced at lower rates if the Fed delivers the rate cuts in the first half of the year.